Now this is the output of the uh, Direct Digital Synthesis or DDS um, project that I did in the previous video and it's producing a nice 250 uh, Hertz signal. Um, I modified the software. Um, I'm not going to go into what I did to the software. I'll do that in, in my next video I think. But I modified the software so that I could have manual control over the frequency and I hooked it up to the serial port um, or the sorry the USB port on my computer on my PC and then I can use a program called uh, well there's many terminal programs but the one I'm using is called TerraTerm and I simply type the the digits of the frequency that I want onto the um, of, I, of the output that I want I type them onto the screen on my computer and then uh, the microcontroller reads those digits and then converts them into frequency so I can manually change this frequency but what I want to show you here is um, an issue with this method of, of uh, converting the digital signal into an analog that, that is using the PWM output and then filtering it to get an analog signal so what we're seeing here now is a fairly low frequency signal and you can see that it's um, going pretty much down to zero volts and pretty much up to five volts over the full range of it's a full um, five volt peak to peak signal but if I were to increase that frequency to say one kilohertz and you'll notice a change obviously the the frequency has changed you got more sine waves across the screen here but what I wanted to point out here is where this lower point of the signal is it's not at zero anymore whereas the previous one at 250 Hertz was and the top here isn't at 5 volts anymore either so um, let's just open that up a bit and I'll go up to a, a much higher frequency let's try 3 kilohertz. Quite a significant difference between the 250 hertz and the 3 kilohertz. So you can see how the signal is getting lower and lower as the frequency goes up. And that's the result of the filter that I had to put on to filter out the, uh, the, the PWM signal. So if I move my scope probe over to the PWM input to the filter and you'll see a digital signal like that. Now it's very hard to trigger on it but I'll just stop that. Um, there. So you can see how it really is only switching between 5 volts and ground and it's nothing in between. So in order to make the um, the analog signal appear I have to filter out this frequency here and that's what the purpose of that RC network that I showed you in the previous video what it actually does. So I'll just put it back over to the analog output. The problem what we're seeing here is um, we're reaching the uh, the knee or the cutoff frequency of the filter. In fact with the components that I use which are 12k ohms and 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor um, the cutoff frequency where it starts to roll off rapidly is about 1300 and 26 Hertz so we're at 3 kilohertz or so we're well down the slope so that would explain why the output voltage has decreased now I could try to um, change the the cutoff frequency of that filter by changing the resistor which I'll do now and what I'll do is I'll change the 12k resistor to a um, 1.2k ohm resistor and what we'll see here as you can see how the signal has gotten um, bigger let me just put some uh, filtering on that oh, that doesn't work either okay unfortunately I can't get the scope to trigger properly on that there we go <clears throat> so I've gotten my peak to peak voltage back again but what we're seeing now is more of the PWM frequencies peaking through. So the uh, cutoff frequency of the new filter with the tw uh, 12k resistor, or sorry, the uh, 1.2k resistor, is now 10 times further out in frequency. It's around 13.26 kilohertz. And so um, it's allowing the low frequency to come through much better, and that gives us the, the maximum peak to peak voltage. 
but it's also allowing more of the PWM signal to come through. So if I stop it, the scope here, and you can see how we're starting to see the switching frequency here along the waveform. And so this is not a very adequate um, method of going from digital to analog because it doesn't allow us a very wide range of analog frequencies out. And so what I want to show you in this video is another way of converting the digital signal into the analog signal. So what we have here is the current filter that we're using. There's the PWM output from the microcontroller goes through the 12K resistor, the capacitor, and the signal comes out here. And all I did um, to increase the frequency or the, the voltage level of the analog signal coming out is I just reduced the value of this resistor to, to uh, 1.2K and then it just changes, since it's a factor of 10, it's clearly that the, the cutoff frequency is going to kind of change by a factor of 10 so it becomes 13 kilohertz instead of 1300 hertz. But as you saw on the oscilloscope, it's not a very good way of doing this. And so what I'm going to show you is yet another method of uh, generating an analog signal from a digital input. And what I'm going to do is use something that's called an R2R ladder, which consists of all of these resistors. And also, uh, we're now using, five, uh, in this case, five or six I.O. pins on an I.O. port of the microcontroller. Instead of one PWM output, we're now using five pins. So that's the advantage of this, will sh I'll show you what it will be, but the disadvantage of this method is it uses up a lot more I.O. pins. <clears throat> now, the data that's in the sign table that gets output to the PWM is 8 bits of data. And I would have preferred to use an 8-bit ladder here, but um, the A to Mega has only one I.O. port that's a full 8 bits wide, port D. Ports C and, and B are only six bits or so, yeah six bits wide, but I couldn't use port B or port D, which is eight bits wide, because the lower two bits are assigned to the serial port, and I couldn't use those to um, as two more signals coming out of the uh, into the ladder network here. So I had to go with only six bits instead of eight. So that just uh, reduces our resolution, but it does, it's not going to reduce our voltage levels anything or any amount. And the way this ladder is made up is um, you've got a value of resistor here, R, and this resistor here is twice that. So in my case, I'm using uh, 22K ohms here and 11K ohms here. And you'll see how the ladder alternates. So all of the outputs from the microcontroller go through a 22K ohm resistor, and there's a 11K ohm resistor between the outputs, except for this one here at the bottom, which is 22K and then we take our analog voltage out of the top and it's just you could do the math you can work it out but it's just a simple resistor divider that just changes the voltage level depending on which one of these I.O. pins is high or low and remember the voltage on this pin is either going to be 0 volts or 5 volts same with all the other pins here they're not going to be anything in between 0 volts or 5 volts they, just like the PWM output is only switching between 0 and 5 volts same with these I.O. pins here as well and so what I'm doing in the software, which is the uh, the other modification I made, was uh, I take the, the value that I've read from the sign table and I just shoot it out the port. Actually, um, I end up in shifting it to the right two positions to knock off the lower two bits, the most or the least significant bits, and then putting in the upper six bits into the I.O. port here. So it doesn't change the maximum voltage that you'll produce, but it does change the number of steps that you can create here. And I've reduced the number of steps by a factor of four, because I've knocked off two bits. So I uh, will go back to the oscilloscope and have a look at what the output here looks like. So the top trace here is the original filtered PWM output. And uh, I've, I've changed the resistor back to the 12K so that it, it was working a bit better. And you can definitely see that it's not reaching ground here is not going to 5 volts up here. This blue trace here, the bottom trace, is the ladder output. And you can see how it's actually traversing a full 5 volts even though um, our frequency is quite high. Now I'm just going to blow this up a bit and you can have a look at what the signal looks like, the ladder signal looks like. So you can see the steps here. Each one of these steps represents 
a different value that's been taken out of the um, the sign ROM and output to the I/O port, and then uh, the resistor ladder network converts it into an analog voltage that's proportional to that number. And so the uh, direct digital synthesis is just picking numbers out of the sign table and outputting it uh, and continuously. And this frequency here between these two rising edges is the 52, sorry, what am I doing here? It's 50 kilohertz. It's the update rate of the uh, the direct digital synthesis. It's a little hard to say. And so um, we can have a look here. If I increase the frequency even more, let's go to 5 kilohertz. and stop this oscilloscope. So now you can see that we're getting less steps for the, the sine wave to produce the whole sine wave. That's because the DDS is cycling through the, the, uh, the sine table much faster and with much bigger steps. So it's only picking certain values out of the sine table. And it's picking less of them and there's a bigger step between each one as you can see here. It still looks like a sine wave but it's um, much more choppy. Now the uh, filtered PWM output is much smoother, but you can see how the voltage has changed again. It's even less than it was before. Now if I bring the frequency back down to something really slow, let's go back to the 250 hertz before, as we had before. And we'll stop this again. It's barely noticeable on the bottom one here but you can faintly see this, the steps, the individual steps here. Let's bring it back a bit. Yeah, you're never going to see the steps now because it's, uh, it's taking more samples all the way along here um, to produce this uh, sine wave because it's going much slower. The DDS is not taking such a big step into the sine table each time around. So as you can see here, um, both of these methods have their drawbacks and advantage, advantages. So the ladder network maintains the full voltage range, but uh, it requires a number of I.O. pins from the microcontroller to make it work. And um, it is a bit steppy, although if you, if you, at the higher frequency, so is the filtered um, PWM. The filtered PWM has the advantage in that it takes only one I.O. pin from the microcontroller. But as you can see, its um, output voltage level is dependent on the frequency. Um, if you were at a fixed frequency or a very narrow range of frequencies, it would probably be the, the better one to work with. Um, but um, either one, like I said, would, uh, would work um, depending on the situation that, that you want to use it in. And both of these would benefit from having a buffer amplifier connected to the outputs. Uh, if, you, if you loaded down the outputs with any kind of resistance, you're going to really affect the, the voltage output as well. So you would have the uh, outputs going into the high impedance input of an amplifier, and that way the signal won't be affected by the load on the output. So um, that's about all I'm going to talk about with this um, video. Uh, the, the latter network was something I wanted to introduce and uh, uh, I'll put a schematic up on onto my GitHub site so you can have a look at it and uh, build something on your own if you want to try it out. Um, on my next video I will show you the software that I'm using for this um, but I'll the video will be based on the serial port and not on DDS and so uh, stay tuned for that video and I'll show you how to set up the serial port or the UART inside the microcontroller to make it uh, able to talk to the PC. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.